Hello creators, it's Kayleen with Brushstrokes. Wanted you to join me with an acrylic painting today. Um, this is for any age, beginner painting. We're going to do a step-by-step -step and create this really fun palm tree scene. Um, you are welcome to customize it any way you want, just with all the other classes. So you can do other colors, um, different amounts of trees, uh, leave the moon out if you want. So lots of different ways that you could customize it for you. I'm going to be walking you through the basics of this one, but I'll probably um, um, leave one tree out, mostly because I am going to shrink it down today. So I'm going to be working on a significantly smaller size canvas. So I just want you to know as well, you don't have to have the same size canvas that um, I'm creating on. You can um, alter it based on what you have at home and what you have to create on. So don't feel like you're limited based on what you have available to you, okay? So I'm going to be working on the smaller size panel. Uh, this one's not a wrapped canvas like the original is. It's just a flat panel. Um, but I just want you to know that anything can work. So don't feel like you have to do what I'm creating on. Change it up and um, morph it to what works for you, okay? So quick checklist. You should have your canvas or your paper or whatever you're creating on. You should have paper towel should have your paints in whatever colors you selected. Today I'm gonna do um, the same as the original, so I'm gonna have a blue, purple, black, a little bit of white, and some pearlescent. And then, bucket of water with brushes. I have a lot of brushes in here. I'm not gonna use them all. They just happen to be all in here um, from all my days of creating. So don't um, expect me to use all these today. I'm just gonna use a few, maybe two or three, okay? And then the other thing, I want to have on hand is a pencil and something round to make our moon and that's where we're going to start with so what I'm going to use uh, this mason jar uh, lid ring for um, is to do the circle to our moon so depending on how big your circle is your moon's going to be um, larger or smaller so I'm going to flip it around and do the inside circle so I have a little bit of a smaller moon today but even if you have a little tiny circle, you can use that as well. Um, so this is just going to be a reference point, um, and we're going to cover most of it up, and we might even have to draw it again later. Um, but it's just good to have a base there so you kind of know where your moon's going to be placed while we're working on everything else. So I'm just going to put this down real quick and just do a very light, quick outline where my moon will be later, okay? And you can set those two aside. And then we're going to work on our background. So... With this painting, what we're actually going to do is um, kind of picture it without the palm trees, without the moon, um, without the shiny, pretty watercolor. We're going to do just a solid blue coverage. The whole thing, solid blue, really light. You don't want really thick paint for this, so we're going to water it down a little bit first. So I'm going to take, it looks really dark on here, but I'm going to take that paint um, and add some water to it. And I always pull from the side. I never start in the middle of my blob of paint, start on the edge. And you can see already how much lighter that is. So I'm really thinning it out, watering it down. And another thing you can do, I'll show you in just a second here, once we start to paint on our canvas, if you feel like it's still really thick, so I'm gonna start by painting just nice and smooth, straight across, light side to side. But if you feel like it's really, really dark, what you can do is take a piece of paper towel. I'm a fan of painting with paper towel. Either just rip a little bit off or even use the whole thing. And you just take your paper towel and wipe it side to side like that. Then you're going to have a nice, very light color blue, especially if it was a dark blue to start with. So I'm going to probably come back and use that little tool again. But first thing I'm going to do is quickly cover the entire background with a light blue. Just this wash of really almost like watery paint. And just get a good coverage on there depending on what you're using, if it's a canvas or if it's paper, you might get um, a little bit of warping if you have just paper. So don't worry about that. We can work with anything. You could be working on a rock right now too. That's great. I have a rock I just, oh, I just took it out of the room here. I had a rock I did the other day that had a pretty palm tree on it. I think I posted a video for that one. Just get a nice, quick, easy coverage of this blue. Just side to side, nice and smooth, not thick at all. You don't want to see ridge lines of paint. 
And any spots that are separating like that, just go back and fill them in once they dry a little bit to fill in those little gaps. So now that I have a pretty full coverage, then I'm just going to take my paper towel again and just kind of remove that excess paint, but also it's going to lighten it up and thin it out. I'm working flat on the table today, but you can always work with an easel to put it upright a little bit. There, I like that. I don't mind the discoloration where there's a little bit of um, lighter blue and darker blue. That's totally fine with me. Okay. And then, next thing we're going to do is make the bottom part um, separate from the top. Um, so by doing that, what we want to do is in the sky area first, we're going to add these little slices of purple. So just really softly um, kind of feather the purple in from the halfway point of our canvas. So if we take our canvas and kind of picture where the middle is, that's the bottom half is where our water is, the top half is where our sky is, and that's where we're going to add that purple. So that's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to move to a slightly smaller brush. It doesn't have to be significantly smaller, but whatever you have works. Just like before, water the purple down a little bit. This can be a, um, a smidge thicker than the paint we had over here because we want this to kind of lay on top of it. We don't necessarily want it to blend in to the blue. We want it to um, almost give us the idea of little clouds or um, like little slivers of uh, um, light being left over. Okay, scrape off the excess. Never want a big glob on your brush. Just a little bit of paint at a time. And then here's the halfway point. I don't want to draw a straight line all the way across. I want to go really gentle and kind of quick and light touch. So if I squish too hard, my bristles are going to flare out too much. So I want a nice gentle touch and just go back and forth, straight left to right. I'm trying not to arch it too much like a rainbow. Um, I want it to look like a skyline. So just real soft, left to right. The more purple you add, the darker, like a more nighttime scene you'll have. If you want it a little bit lighter daytime, don't add as much of this purple throughout the back. Okay, perfect. So don't overthink it, don't do too much. You just wanna quickly add it and move on to the next step. So now I'm cleaning my brush. The way I clean my brush is I'm just squishing it in my bucket of water to remove that excess purple. And then you can kind of scrape off the excess water if you want and then wipe it on a paper towel. That will help pull out any of the extra color left over in your bristles. Because next I'm gonna be moving on to pearl. So I use this shimmery white, it's a metallic paint, so it kind of reflects the light back at you. Um, if you don't have any metallic pearl, just take a little bit of um, your blue color used and a teeny little bit of white to make just a slightly different color um, to, to add over top of the water so we can get kind of a soft water um, look. But I'm gonna use pearl and I'm gonna use that same size brush, but I'm going to thin it out because I want it to be very see-through and transparent. Got a little bit of purple in there too, which is okay. I'm all right with that. Okay, so just a nice, very thin, watery acrylic on my brush. Very gentle touch. So when I do this step, I'm gonna start, this is gonna be a little bit more solid. So I'm gonna make a line, try to do it fairly straight across, because this will be like the edge of your water, your horizon line right there. And then as I keep adding this, I'm just gonna keep going back and forth. And not, uh, again, not overthinking it. You just want it to look like, like nice soft flat water. If you had lots of uh, like a thicker bit of uh, pearl or white or whatever you're using, in one spot, it might look like um, little waves rolling in, little white caps. So that's totally okay, too. If you get a lot of that, you got a hurricane coming. Okay, and I'm going to bring this all the way to the bottom. Remember, if you have a wrapped canvas, you always want to paint around the sides. So it looks like it's finished all the way around. Unless you're going to frame it, then you don't have to do that. And then just add your little touches here and there if you want a little extra. I think that looks good. And then it will dry with a little bit of a shimmer to it, which I like. Okay. And then we're going to move on next. Um, so cleaning my brush. Next, we're going to move on to the black silhouette of just the, the land area down here. So we're not working um, quite into the trees yet. We're just going to do this land mass and then we're going to fill it in solid black. 
So brush, I'm probably gonna use that same size, but um, any size is good. And we do want the paint a little bit thicker this time, so I'm not adding nearly as much water, just a little bit, but um, we do want that the black paint to be pretty solid when we apply it and fill it in, so it doesn't need a lot of water, okay? Now when you apply your land, um, I'm gonna, so if I have my water area here, I'm gonna kind of split that in half and start right about here. And I'm gonna go straight across for a little bit and then just make this rumbly, bumbly, like rocky ledge that kind of comes down real quick. But make your your um, landline however you want. Maybe you want it to kind of come down like this so it looks like you have a little walkway going to the beach. Or um, you, know, you could have it peek up like this and put your palm tree right in the middle. It's totally up to you. Um, I'm gonna start right over here. I'm very gentle touch, kind of bring it in like this. And then just all I'm gonna do is just shake my brush. I don't wanna be super drastic, but just kind of rumble bumble and uh, bring this down, nice rocky ledge down to the bottom of my canvas. And then I'm gonna fill this portion in solid black. Okay, later on we'll come back and add highlights, but right now we can have it be solid black. And just fill it in nice and even, not too thick. Okay, there we go. And then the next thing that we want to do is actually take a break. Because um, depending on how fast you're working, if your background paints are all still really wet, we can't apply the white of the moon yet because it's going to pull all that purple in that we just applied if it's still wet. Um, so we want to take a little break, let everything dry before we come back and add um, the final touches, which would be our moon, the reflection, and our palm trees and highlights. So now that we have our background on there, um, we're just going to take a little break, let it dry, and then we'll be back in just a second to continue on. Okay, and we're back, and we had our background drying for the last five to ten minutes, um, if yours needed it. And now we're going to go and do the first layer of our moon. There are a couple layers to it. Um, if you completely lost your pencil line, you just go grab your um, outlining tool again, which I did completely lose mine. So I'm going to take this and just put it right back kind of roughly where I had the original. Um, I moved to a tiny brush now for this next step, which is to do a base layer of regular white paint. Um, a little bit thicker, you don't need to do, you no know, super globby paint is okay if there um, is a little bit, if it's a little bit see-through, because we are gonna do a second layer of pearl as well to make it look kind of shiny. Um, but you can use this um, outline shape and just fill it in or do your outline and then fill it in like you can pick up your your cup or your mason jar lid or whatever you're using for your outline or just freehand it you don't have to use an outline you could just make your circle however big or little you would like it to be just very thin layer of paint is great okay and then while that's drying a little bit, we're going to use the same brush and the same white paint to work on our reflection underneath the moon. So directly below on top of the water is where we want to do this reflection. Um, you don't want your moon here and then all of a sudden your reflection way over here. It just wouldn't make sense. So we want to go directly below there. So all you want to do, um, a nice light layer of paint, still the same regular white, and straight left to right. You don't want to go straight up and down or make a circle um, in the water because we want the water to look like it's flat. So directly below the moon, right on that horizon line, we're going to start with a little bit of white and just go side to side and just make this highlight in the water. Make it look a little bit brighter like that moon is actually reflecting off the water. And it doesn't need to be super big. You could run it all the way down um, to the to the land line if you want. I'm just gonna make mine a rough circle shape, but going straight left to right like this. So it looks like we're getting a very um, serene, very flat, very uh, mild water, like water that looks like glass. And you're getting a pretty decent reflection from it. Now at this step, if your background was still really wet, um, it would just completely absorb all this color so you gotta be a little bit careful that you have enough time for it to dry before you apply the white. Now I don't want it to be super bold, like I don't want it to look bright, stark white. 
It's better to have a little bit of a subtle like blue hint to it so that it looks like a reflection in the water. And again, the edges can be kind of rough. They don't need to be like a perfect round shape. You want it to look like there's water rippling through there. And super gentle touch. Don't overthink it. Very, very light, very quick. That's all you need. Okay, that's good. All right, and then while those two are drying, we're going to bounce over and work on our palm trees for a little bit. So today I think I'm only going to do one because I have a smaller canvas, but if you have a bigger one, you can definitely do two like this and split it. Um, I could easily do two as well on my little guy, but it just depends on your comfort level and squeezing in um, more detail uh, into a smaller area. But definitely play around and, and maybe start with one. If that went okay, do another. It's totally fine. But I'm probably going to use that uh, medium round brush that we had used for our uh, land. So I'm going to find that brush again. This guy, the medium round. So the first thing I'm going to do is create the trunk. So the tree trunk that's um, going to start up in the sky area and work our way down. The easiest way to apply it is starting at the top with black paint and a very, very gentle, gentle pressure at the top. And as you get closer to the bottom, you kind of push your brush a little bit more and it starts to flare out a little bit more. So you get a, a gently tapered trunk. So it looks like um, it's been growing from the base and it just gets skinnier and skinnier as it goes. So I'm going to do a little bit of water down black paint. So because we're doing a silhouette of our land, we're not adding color to the palm trees because our light source, our moon is behind the tree. So it's just casting a shadow. So it just looks like it's just pitch black. So a little bit of watered down black paint. Again, never a big glob, for, especially for this step. Um, just want a nice light amount of paint on there. You want to start where the palm trees are all going to spread out from. So wherever you start at the top is where all these um, beautiful leaves are going to be growing out of. Um, if you're really close to the moon, which is totally cool, you can overlap it. You just got to be a little bit careful. If you want to do the second coat, you'd want to do that before you overlap it. So you might want to take another break and then let that dry and do a second coat before you do the black overlapping um, the moon. So I'm going to try to just stay slightly away from it so I don't have to worry about that today. And I'm going to have my palm tree probably right about here and then it's going to um, come down to right about this area. So as I apply, it's a very, very gentle touch at the top. And as I work my way down, add a little bit more pressure with my brush so it gets wider and wider. So you have this nice gentle taper on the way up. Um, if anything, if you ran out of paint, just go back and fill it in. Or if you got a little wonky spot, you can always just reapply over the same area. Or if it didn't uh, taper that well the first time, do it again. That's okay. And then I'm going to move to my smaller brush to do all the, the leaves um, and the branches. If you only have this brush, just be a very, you know, or a medium-sized brush. Very gentle pressure as you do it. I'm going to move to the small brush again, the same one I was using for the white but we're going to use black paint. And the biggest key to doing the palm trees and making them look like palm trees is to make sure that here's the top of our tree. Every branch is going to come out of this exact same spot. If you start here and do a branch and then go do down the tree and do a branch and down the tree, you have a different type of plant. It becomes a fern or something completely different. It won't be a palm tree anymore. So just make sure you have every branch come out of this exact same spot. So what I like to do is starting there, even make a dot. If you're like, I don't, I don't know if I can remember that. Just make a dot or a little circle and just know that's the spot that all of these branches are going to come out of. So I like to start by just giving, you know, like almost like an M shape. You just want it to be like, oh, I'm going to grow out and then like uh, gravity takes over. I mean, real careful. I might get real close and maybe run into that moon a little bit, but I'm going to try to be careful and just do a little whoop. Ooh, get real close. And then the other side. Meow. Now every single branch, I'm going to do a couple more like, ooh, meow. Now we've got to go some going up. And then maybe even one straight up. Yep, look at that guy. That turned out good. Okay. Now, when we do leaves, we got to think about gravity. So 
if you're sitting on earth and you're looking at this tree and it has leaves and say that it's not super windy out if it's windy out it's going to blow those leaves every which direction but if you're looking at it and it's a calm day those leaves are going to kind of like drag down towards the the ground they're going to like just have gravity take over so when we are applying leaves to our branches you got to think about that so if i start with this guy that comes out I'm not going to have a bunch of straight out leaves that go doo, 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 straight up to the side because that look like their tree got electrocuted. We don't want that. We want it to be um, nice and soft where the leaves kind of grow towards the ground because that's where the gravity is taking it. So you always start right on the branch you just created and quick, soft, light um, touch and just kind of grow those uh, leaves out and away. If you want to ever practice like on the paper next to you, definitely do that first. So I'm going to start right on my branch and just do light, very light touch and just go. Just have those leaves grow down super gentle. Don't go single leaf space, single leaf space. It'll look like a crazy like centipede. We don't want that. Um, you can have a few like on the ends here, have a few little um, leaves kind of growing out the other side. It's okay. There's, you know, we can have a little bit of a, rustling of the leaves or maybe the the direction changed and you can see some of the um, leaves off the other side okay same thing over here i'm gonna go down okay, get those guys to grow downwards first really gentle touch is kind of the big big key of this if you push too hard you're gonna have a really really square solid line okay maybe add a few I'm trying to be super careful I, I i don't mind running into the moon usually but being I want to do that second coat, I'm trying to keep it a little bit away from there. Maybe a little stray guy right there. Okay, and then these guys, because they're almost straight up and down, we can have leaves off of both sides. That's okay. But it doesn't need to be a super hairy caterpillar. Okay. Really, really gentle touch. Quick and light and air and wispy and really feathery. Okay. One's kind of growing up. You want to grow, you know, gravity takes over. Kind of go out and down. And the one that goes kind of straight back, you can have them on both sides because that one's kind of growing away from us so you can see it on both sides. Okay, there. I got a little spot on my trunk. I got to correct. Yep, there we go. Then, um, I, I wouldn't mind today having some grasses growing around um, my, my beachy land area. So even at the base of my palm tree today, maybe add a little quick wisp of some grasses. Maybe if you want to do some flowers down there, have a little kitty cat or a dog sitting um, on the beach. Maybe even have another tree here. You have a hammock uh, going between them. You know, make it your own. But I'm going to just do a couple little tufts of leaves down here. Really light, quick, starting in the ground down here and go upwards. Okay. And the rest is all, maybe this is rocky up here and then it goes nice sand, sandy beach down there, okay? So while that's drying, we're gonna do our second coat on our moon. I'm gonna do a second coat of white first, a very thin, thin layer of white. And then while that dries, we'll bounce over and add highlights and then finish in our moon with some um, like pretty, uh, metallic pearls and grays okay so I'm just doing a second coat in the moon now if you like the look of um, like craters in there you can kind of change the direction it doesn't need to be a smooth application like this you can kind of like dig your bristles into that paint and push it around a little bit so that it's not um, like a clean smooth line if you want it to look a little bit more like those craters um, after you get the coat on here like the second coat of paint just push it around a little bit so that there is um, a little bit more dimension to it. And that will really come into play too once we get it with the silver on there. But I'm gonna dig some spots out here like that to make it a little bit more textured. I like that, looks good. All right, and then I wanna do a little bit of highlighting kind of throughout um, my ground area here. You can use pearl or white. Um, because if you think about it in a realistic sense, if we have a really bright shining moon like this and it is like reflecting all this light on the water, it would cast a little bit of light onto our, um, our trees and our ground as well. So 
very, very gently, we want to add a little bit of paint, uh, but it's not going to cover all the ground. So you got to think about the moon is setting way off in the distance, way back there, and it's just casting a little bit of light um, on our land. So we don't want to make it solid, bright highlights, just a little touch. So same brush, cleaned out. I'm going to use a little bit of pearl, but again, use whatever color you have and very little paint. Very little paint is a trick to this. So scrape off as much as you can and a very gentle touch. I'm just going to do a little bit of like bumpy, rocky highlight. There's no detail or rhyme or reason to this. Just a little bit of uh, scraping the paint on the top portion of our land here. If you overdo it, just cover it black again. Super easy to fix, okay? Maybe a little bit in our grass. If it's still wet, it turns kind of a, a metallic silver. So it looks a little bit softer. It's not nearly as bold, which I like. Okay. Good. And then I do want to add some um, down my palm tree as well. Like really gently adding it on this side of my palm tree. Just a gentle touch in there. Maybe some down just a few of the leaves, not all of them. Because I want it to look like a nighttime scene, not a daytime scene where it's all bright. So really, really gentle. Little touches of highlights. It doesn't need to be a full coverage of all of your branches and leaves. Just a few here and there. And if something stands out a lot after you've applied it, just blend it out or go back with the black paint and cover it back up. Okay. All right. And then being I have a little bit of black on my bristles because my tree was still wet, I'm going to take that and mix it in with some of the pearl. So I'm not adding extra black, I'm just taking what's wet on my bristles and pulling some of this pearl to the side to make a very dark, well, a very light silver, I shouldn't say dark silver, very dark pearl, I guess. And this is a color I want to use on my moon to add some dimension and some craters to it. So after I've mixed it up, scrape off all the excess and then... Or top of some of these areas that we kind of dug out um, you can just kind of tap in a little bit more pearl if you want some really deep craters get right up to the edges in some spots if you really want it to stand out wait till that um, that white layer of the moon dries then you can really make it pop okay we always come back later too come back and add more another day Okay. And then say you get that done and you're like, I really want that tree to be in front of there. Like, I can have these. Also, my tree is now in front of that moon. Okay, super easy to add that. Then you can finish up with your signature. Um, if you want to do, you know, a bold or really like a light hidden. Um, it's always good to add your signature on your canvas. So if I do mine today, I just do a quick quick easy guy and then you're all done how fun was that to follow along with easy peasy stuck to my paper so a fun um, simple step-by-step -step palm tree painting again customize it to you um, make different colors uh, but send me what you created. I love seeing um, all the different ways people interpret the painting and um, maybe different things you add. Maybe you have a shark out there or a boat. Maybe you want to add some birds. Um, I love it when people add animals or people walking or sitting on the beach. Um, but I'd love to see what you create. So please um, send me a message. Find me on Facebook, um, Brush Strokes Art Supply. Again, this is Kayleen. Thank you so much for joining me today.